Jenny, it's a real treat to be here. We're approaching 40 years, or well, it is 40 years since, since Corbiers National. I imagine those memories are still kind of seared into, into the brain, are they now, looking back on it? It was just the most remarkable day. And to win the Grand National with Corbiers, he enabled me to thank the people that supported me and stood by me and for my mum and dad in particular I'd said to David that I want my mum and dad to go to Aintree this year and he said okay fine I said well this is going to be the best chance I'll ever have of winning the national and I knew that. What was that like going into into the race with presumably you know a, a, a very good chance on paper it was the race that you wanted to win. What were the emotions like on, on the day? The anxiety had squeezed my heart up to about the size of a broad bean. And you can feel yourself um, being tightened up like somebody putting a screw in a wall, um, but not with an electric drill. You don't get the over like you do on the <laughs> flat. <laughs> You've got this slow, screwing up and then the tape goes up and there's a huge roar from the crowd and generally speaking I had always had my horses go around the inside and the reason I did that is because there's left traffic. The windy jockeys and the horses that they felt perhaps weren't going to face that challenge, that bit of extra challenge, would be going over there which suited me, mm. a bit more room. Um, but, but watching him go round, was it as nerve-wracking? Because he was jumping so beautifully and travelling. You must have... It was when did you I think didn't... you were in, 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 with a, in with a chance? It was a good job I didn't have any breakfast, else it would have been all over <laughs> my shoes. He's going down to Beaches the second time, and, and I, my inside, I am screaming. And I'm going, please, God, let him jump this. Please, God, let him jump this. I'll do anything you like. I, I promise I won't swear anymore. I won't smoke cigarettes anymore. <laughs> it's a good job I didn't tell him. I wasn't going to tell any more lies. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he flew beaches. I mean, it's incredible. And when he jumps the last and he's got to the elbow, I am now sobbing because I'm seeing crisp and red rum. So that is what's about to explode in my head. I'm thinking this can't happen again. But, you know, he gave me his heart that day, he gave me everything. And then the world went mad. It yeah. <laughs> just went ballistic. You said the world went mad. <coughs> what was it like in the aftermath of, of Corbier's win? I mean, on the day and then subsequently the, the press interest, it must have, must have been something you'd never experienced before. Corbier's gone past the winning line in front and all of a sudden the double doors that led onto the balcony of Robert Stigwood's box burst open like that and David came flying in and he said bloody hell missus you've done it and that was when the first time I realised that I'd won the Grand National and I stood there for a second and the penny dropped and I thought bloody hell I have too so we go down to the unsaddling enclosure and I did the interview with David Coleman and I had the most peculiar experience. I can, I'm up there somewhere, this mm. is the gospel truth, I'm up there somewhere, and I can see David Coleman talking to somebody I recognise as myself. It was, it was bizarre. When we got home, it was about three o'clock in the morning, my house was absolutely rammed with flowers that people had sent, and it was incredible. And I went and lay on the bed and I had the most lovely, warm, contented feeling ever I've experienced in my life. 